Hey guys, Linode now has managed Kubernetes and they're keeping their usual simple pricing model. There's no management fees like AWS and other cloud providers. They even bundle transfer so you can significantly cut costs when compared to AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and Azure. With the amount you save, if you're doing any K8s, it really doesn't make sense to use anybody else but Linode. It's now even easier to connect to your Linode account. With one less login to remember, you can use your GitHub account. Give it a shot. The link is in the description tab of this video below. And if you use that link, you'll get a $20 credit. Hey guys, what's up? All right, so in this video, what we're gonna be talking about is the new fiber framework from the Go community. And I know what you guys are thinking, another effing language, another effing library. Why do I wanna do that? Uh, but let me go ahead and get into it because I think this one's a little bit different. It actually has me more excited than other projects that I've seen, especially when it comes to web and being a web framework. I feel like things have gotten a little bit stale and predictable. Uh, and that's because I, I really feel like so many people have moved over to Node.js that like we kind of use Node.js for everything. Uh, people that know Django and Ruby on Rails and stuff, they probably still use that stuff. But it seems like everybody else has kind of moved over to Node and um, it just seems kind of stale, right? Like we're always doing stuff in Express. There's a couple of other frameworks that I'm impressed with, with Node, like Fastify and all that stuff. But uh, basically nothing wrong with Express. It's done the internet quite, a, uh, quite well. A lot of people use it, but I think it's stale and boring. Uh, this is the number one selling point of why you would want to use Fiber for your next project. When you look at the actual responses that Fiber is able to do over Express, uh, it's actually mind-boggling. So I'll have this benchmark link in the description tab below if you guys want to check that out. But it's, uh, it's mind-boggling the amount of time that you'll save on latency and just the amount of, um, you know, the amount of re responses and uh, requests and responses that this thing can handle versus a, a simple Node.js, uh, Express.js web server. So if we just move down through the list here, I mean, even JSON, uh, JSON serialization, I mean, that's like five times the speed of Express. So when I started, when I saw this, I was like, wow, you know, this is, uh, this is going to be something pretty interesting. D does it actually work? You know, can you actually build a website in it? And to answer that question, yes, you can. It's already on a stable 1.0 version. It's actually on 1.12 right now. And um, there, I've noticed a, a couple of uh, bugs with it. There's one that's actually going on right now with a Windows machine where, like, there's a caching problem on the server. But it's a brand new project, so keep that in mind. It has a healthy amount of contributors for such a small project, and it's only been around for six months. So how hard is it to get started? It's actually not that difficult. You just have to have Go installed on your machine. Once you have Go installed and set up so that you can actually execute Go programs, then it's simply just firing one single Git command and you can get up and running uh, with the project. So to save you guys a bunch of time, I actually created uh, just a quick, uh, like a quick start on GitHub. So if you guys want to check that out as well, the link is in the description tab below. But it essentially just comprises some of the basic stuff that you need in order to get started with quickly, which is like, how do I deliver JSON data? How do I deliver HTML? How do I render static content? Basically all the stuff that a typical website needs. So that said, if I just jump right into the code, it's actually very basic to get a, a web server running. I have a web server running right here. And um, just if I, I'll go through the code real quick, you have your imports, right? This is the import for the fiber library. That's really all that's needed in your Go code. This is because I'm going to be um, serializing some JSON data. So that's what that's for. You define an interface. Uh, it's a, it will, here's a struct uh, specifically, but so my JSON data will have like a page, uh, and, which is an integer, and then an array of fruit values that gets returned. Um, so the main function of a Go app is obviously the starting point. This is where the app gets newed up. So you just create a new instance of Fiber. And then from there, you just simply do your routing like we've, uh, we've seen. So the, the, a lot of these statements are very um, uh, repetitive, essentially. But you're just defining your routes and then defining the response. So I have a bunch of different routes already uh, pre-configured. So if I go to localhost, since this is already running, uh, and if I go all the way down to the bottom of the code here, you can see it's actually listening on port 3000, very similar to Node.js, right? Um, so if I go to the home page, you get Hello Fiber. Let me make this smaller. All right, so you get Hello Fiber there uh, at the root directory. 
this is where the static content is being rendered. So here you can go ahead and define a folder where your static content sits. So that's what I went ahead and did. I just created a public folder. And then I also, this is the actual URL that says if you request the public in the URL, point to the public folder and then, um, you know, deliver that. So right now I just have the simple CSS folder, image folder, and a, um, a JSON, uh, I'm sorry, JavaScript file. And then here is a templates folder, which is the actual template that's being re returned if uh, we request it here. So that is what's going on here. So if I go to app git hello route, it's going to uh, read the template file and then return it. And if we look inside the template, you can see all the static content of the template is referencing that public directory and the built-in static file handler within um, within this project is, is uh, returning the content. And then from there, all you have to do is if you have a working Go installation, you just say go run start.go or whatever the name of your file is. In this case, it's start.go and uh, the application is running. So let's go to the hello page. And this is where that bug I was telling you about, for some reason there's a caching problem. It actually just got uh, reported, so they're working on that. But if I refresh, it comes back. So that's a problem. It's zoomed in really high right now. That's the, the normal zoom. So this is a uh, HTML template that's already being, uh, that's being uh, returned here by the server. And then um, just it's referencing, obviously, the, the image here. There's the CSS file that's being loaded as well as a JavaScript file. The JavaScript file has one method. So if you fire this uh, button click, it's going to call out to the API, and it's going to get a JSON response. So it's alerting that to the page. So that's essentially like what you need in order to get started with this project quickly. So if you guys want to reference that, just uh, check this out. I have all the, the examples of like navigating to the individual pages here, uh, including like how to get parameters, uh, wild cards, so that you can actually design your own API. And an example of that, if I were to change this route to API, I can go to the uh, fruits page that is returning that content, or the, you know, it's the response from that JSON call that we had. Uh, but I can also, um, with that wildcard, I can also do things like users Chris. And then this is actually saying it's capturing the parameter. So you can do lookups with this. So the way that the fruit is being returned is just a simple if condition, just as an example. And it's really sloppy. Just It's just simply to get you started real quick. But this right here is the wild card. So I'm actually printing out the values that you can do something with. So I say do something with these lookup values. That means like read from a local file or call out to a database or do something with whatever that, that parameter is and re return with some data. Um, here I just did that, like I said, the if condition to say if you request the fruits, and then this is where I'm actually just creating some, um, I'm doing some JSON serializing and such. So anyway, um, that is that is the Fiber project in a nutshell. I think it has pretty much everything you need for basic websites, and the speed factor alone is one is really the number one selling point. The fact that this thing just seems to work, obviously some minor bugs, for a project that is only six months old, I think it's uh, pretty impressive what's going on. So you guys should definitely check it out. And for those of you that are not aware, make sure you guys check out my site if you're learning to code and you guys want to learn to code with me. I have uh, courses on all kinds of different stuff. I'm trying to add to that as I can. Um, and then there's just other content on the website. So I'm trying to fill out the website more and more over the uh, weeks, months, years, I suppose. It's a long-term project. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.